Hey there tech fans, Rick here again with another review, and today I have the Blue Eddy EB3A Portable Power Station. This product is perfect for charging and operating all of your portable devices when you're out for a couple of days of camping, or maybe you're a tradesman and you've got to head out in the field and run your power drills and other power tools well away from an AC outlet. Or maybe you're an RVer and you really like spending time out in the wilderness and you want a way to keep your portable electronics fully charged, this product can do all of those. And the best part about it is that Blue Eddy, I think, has struck the perfect balance between power and portability. This product provides 268 watt hours of internal capacity, but it can provide 600 watts of external charging and operating capabilities that can surge to 1200 watts. It's small, it's portable, it's incredibly powerful. And in my opinion, it's really the perfect portable power station for most of the things you're gonna need something like this out in the field. Now, before I get too deep into all the cool features the product provides, I'd like to start with an unboxing just to show you everything that's included with the kit. And then I'll explain what's so cool about this product because this category of portable power stations has really matured in the last couple of years. There's been a lot of innovations, a lot of high-tech improvements, and I'll get into that in a minute. But once I'm done with that, I'll take a closer look at the unit as well, and I'll show you the ports and connections and explain how to use it. And then finally, I'll come back one more time and point out the things that I really like about this portable power station that you can use to compare it to others you may be considering. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first pop open the box, you'll find the power station. Also included are two charging kits. There's an AC charging kit for charging it at home, and there's also a solar panel charging kit that you can use out in the field. Now this is really convenient because you'll plug it into an outlet at home and quickly charge this unit. And I'll get into that in a minute, but I love the fact that they've included a solar panel charging kit as well because if you're out camping, you can bring a couple of small foldable solar panels with you, set those up outside your tent, you can drink in the sunlight, convert it to electricity, and charge the unit for free so you can use it indefinitely out in the field as long as the sun is shining. Also included with the kit is a contact card which explains how to get a hold of the company if you've got questions about the product and a full instruction manual that explains everything you could possibly want to know about this product, how to use it, how to charge it, how to store it, and all the other cool things you can do with it. So read through that manual because even though you can figure out most of what the product can provide, reading through the manual, I promise you there are things in there that you won't stumble across and you want to make sure you get the best value out of the product. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the technology. So for starters, the unit has a really high capacity. It's 268 watt hours of internal capacity, which can provide 600 watts of external charging and operating capabilities that can surge to 1200 watts. And the reason that's important is because if you're plugging things into the AC outlets that draw a little bit more current when you first turn them on, things like drills or motors or anything that has an impeller inside of it, it's gonna draw more current when you first turn it on. Most portable power stations can't handle an extra surge and you're gonna pop a breaker. With this one, you can draw 600 watts steady state, which means you can run it all the time up to 600 watts. But every now and then when you need more current, you can draw a little extra current because the surge protection takes care of it. All right, so let's talk about the three things that you should consider anytime you're looking at a portable power station. What kind of batteries are inside? How do I hang onto the charge? How do I charge it? And then how do I pull that power out of the unit when I'm out in the field and I want to charge and operate all my portable devices? So let's start with the charging capabilities. As I mentioned before, there's an AC kit included. There's a solar panel kit included. You can also get a car kit if you'd like to charge it off your car. But these two charging kits right here provide most of your charging needs out in the field. And charging from your car is a nice thing, but you have to be careful when you plug this into a car because you're drawing energy out of your car battery. And this doesn't know that it's, it's like a vampire. It's going to keep drawing all the power it can to charge internal batteries. And if you've got a battery that's a couple years old, you might pull enough power out of your car battery where you come back to the car and you can't start the car. So I don't use the car charger a lot. I use the home charger to charge it before I leave for the trip. And I'll use a solar panel panel out in the field to charge it when I'm out in the wilderness. So these two kits are pretty simple. One thing that's different though about this and most of the portable power stations on the market is that you'll notice there's no charging brick. It's just the standard AC cable. This plugs into a wall outlet. This has got a computer connector on it which plugs into the front of the unit. And the reason that's important is because the other power stations that use that external brick, that brick is responsible for converting the AC from the wall outlet into DC that's fired at the unit. And that works pretty well, but the problem is those bricks are incredibly inefficient. So they're wasting a lot of energy in that conversion from AC to DC, but more importantly, they can't really help the charging inside there for the batteries. So the unit can just take that DC voltage and distribute it, but it has no control over how much of it comes in and how it's being distributed to those batteries. Because this unit 
has the charging conversion done internally. So the inverters inside the unit, it can control how quickly and safely the internal batteries are being recharged. And that's a big benefit because it allows you to charge it a lot faster. Matter of fact, you can get it up to 80% in less than two hours, which means you're not spending five or six hours to charge the unit and delaying your trip. You plug it in, it charges, you head out the door. So I love the fact that it quickly charges. I also like the fact that they give us a DC input for the solar panel kit and for the car kit. So I've got a couple of different ways to charge it. All right, so once you've charged the unit, now the batteries inside have to hang on to that charge. The battery technology is radically different nowadays than it used to be. So in the early days of portable power stations, most of the battery technology was based on LiPo or lithium polymer cells. And those work okay. They'll take a charge, they'll hold a charge. The problem with LiPo or general LiPo cells are that they're not really good about hanging onto a charge for a long time. So if you charge LiPo cells, they'll typically work well for a couple of days, but they decay over time where they don't hang onto the charge. The other problem with LiPo cells is they're not really tolerant for hot weather and cold weather. So if you're using this outside and you've got a unit that has LiPo cells in it, you're gonna find that in the cold weather, it may not operate that well. You also can't charge it when it's really hot. This one uses lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is one of the latest technologies out for internal storage on these portable power stations. And that's a brand new technology that gives you, number one, a lot more charge and recharge cycles, up to 3,000, so it's gonna last a long time. But more importantly, it's incredibly tolerant of different temperatures, so it works well when it's hot, it works well when it's cold, it hangs onto the charge longer, so it's a much better technology for storage of that energy. And that's really important because if you've charged it, you don't wanna take it out in the field, get to your campsite and find out you only have 80% of the charge left. And that can happen with lipo cells. That won't happen with these lithium iron phosphate cells. So the battery technology is really good. Another key thing is that there's a very advanced battery management system built into the unit that carefully controls how that energy being delivered to the unit is spread across those batteries. So that battery management system is constantly monitoring the batteries to make sure all the cells are good. It's balancing that charge across those cells. When you draw power out of the unit, it's controlling how that power is being delivered. Because think about it, the unit is not inexpensive, it's not terribly expensive, but it's not as expensive as all the electronics you're gonna connect up to it. So if you're gonna connect a tablet, a computer, maybe drone batteries, all of that is much more expensive than the unit. So you wanna make sure that when you charge those devices, you're getting a safe and quick charge out to those devices that isn't gonna damage all those external products. This unit, because of the battery management system, is really, really careful about how it delivers that voltage and current to those external devices. All right, so a couple of the things, once you have the battery charged, you'll want at least three different types of outputs. You'll want an AC output, a pure DC output, and a USB output. This product provides all three. So on the AC side, there are two full-sized AC outlets right there that are grounded outlets. So anything you plug in at home with a three-prong plug, you can plug into the front of that. You can draw 600 watts of energy out of those two outlets, and that can surge to 1,200 watts as well. So whatever you plug in at home, as long as you keep it under 600 watts, plug it in here and you can charge and operate those devices. As far as the DC goes, there's a DC port right up here, which is a full-size DC port, just like in your car. That'll provide 12 volts at 10 amps, which is a lot of current for 12 volts. Just like in your car, whatever you plug there, plug in here and it'll operate just fine. You'll also find two 5521 ports on there as well, which are kind of universal ports. And there are cables out there that'll convert those to two more ports that look like that one. So you can actually have three standard convenience ports, just like you have in your car, by finding two of those adapter cables. Each of those 5521s will provide 12 volts at 10 amps. So you've got a lot of current out of the 12 volt section of this unit. The USB section provides a good variety of ports as well. You'll find two full-sized USB-A ports that can each deliver five volts at three amps, which is the highest amount of current that can be delivered through a standard USB connection. So anything you're plugging into a USB charger at home, you can plug into one of those USB-A ports and charge it just fine. So that can be your phone, your tablet, your camera batteries, anything that charges through USB. You'll also find a single USB-C port, which is the latest standard for USB charging, and that port can deliver 100 watts of charging power, which means you can use it for larger things like laptops or bigger tablets or drone batteries, anything that needs a little bit of extra power to charge, you can use that USB-C for. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll take a closer look at the unit and I'll point out all the connections I've just been discussing so you get a better idea of what they look like and how you can use them. Included with the kit are two charging kits, one AC kit for home, and one solar panel kit for use with solar panels. This one is pretty straightforward. It's got a three-prong grounded plug on one end and a standard computer connection on the other end. This plugs into the front of the unit on the AC portion, and you can quickly charge the unit to 80% in about two hours. 
You'll also find a solar panel connection. This plugs into the front of the unit. This connects up to standard solar panels. You can use up to two 100 watt solar panels for a total output of 200 watts to quickly charge the device. You can also combine AC with the solar at the same time to speed up charging even further. On the front of the product, right here on the top, is a large LED display that provides a lot of really good information about the current status of the power station. And to turn that on, you'll tap this button, and you'll see immediately you have 70% of a charge left on the internal batteries. I also like the fact that they give you a visual representation with this bar graph of how much power is left, because that way I can see it's 70% or I can see that I've got most of the bar graph left. Below that, you'll see 30 hours. The battery management system inside the unit can calculate how much power you're drawing out of the batteries versus how much power is still left on the batteries and give you a number that lets you know how long you can run the devices that are plugged in on the remaining power. And that's really important because if you're down to 15 or 20%, you may want to start unplugging things that aren't that critical so that the things you really care about can use the remaining power. Now you notice the LED just blinked out. The battery management system is extremely frugal about the amount of energy that's used inside the product, and Blue Eddy realizes you don't need an LED display on all the time, so after about 15 or 20 seconds, it's gonna turn off to conserve power. To turn it back on, just tap this button right here. You'll also notice output power and input power, and those are rated in watts. This is showing you how much energy you're using with the product when you plug things in. This is showing you how much energy is heading into the unit when you're charging it. Those are good metrics to keep an eye on. Now there are two circuits on the front, the DC circuit up here, which is 12 volts plus USB, and the AC circuit down here. You'll also find a courtesy light. This is really handy if you're inside a tent, you need a quick flashlight just to look at something. And you can turn that on by holding this button and you'll notice it'll come on at the low setting. Tap it again, it's a little bit brighter. If you tap it again, it goes into SOS mode, and that's really handy if you have a breakdown on the side of the road or there's an emergency. You can put it in SOS mode and set down your power station, and other people will see that beacon blinking. To turn it off, just tap it one more time. The DC circuit is 12 volts at 10 amps right here. It's a standard convenience outlet, just like in your car. So anything you plug in your car, you can plug in there and use it just fine. Below that are two 5521 ports, and these are pretty standard. You can actually get conversion cables that'll turn these into another one of these convenience ports. So if you want, you can actually have three of these by plugging in two of those adapters. There are also cables that'll let you directly charge from that port to a laptop, maybe a computer, other devices. So you have to look for those specialty cables for charging. But I like the cables that convert it to something like this. To the right of that are two full-sized USB-A ports. Both of those provide five volts at three amps each, and that's a really high current. That's probably the highest current you can find in a USB charger. So anything you plug into a USB wall charger at home, you can plug in here and charge just fine. So your phones, your tablets, your camera batteries, anything that charges through USB. To the right of that is a USB-C port, and it's unique because it's also a PD or power delivery port. And what that means is the port will actually look at whatever you've plugged in there. And if you plugged in a device like a phone or maybe some camera batteries that are PD capable, this unit will detect the fact that that unit is a power delivery unit and it'll negotiate very quickly the voltage and current to safely and quickly charge that device based on its current charge level. So it's an intelligent port. It can also deliver 100 watts of power, which is really important if you're trying to charge things like laptops, larger tablets or drone batteries. So a lot of power out of the USB-C port. Below that are the AC ports. There are two of those. They're both three-prong grounded outlets, so you can plug in any AC appliance on either one of these that you would normally use at home. Both of these ports together can provide 600 watts of energy. That's a lot of energy, so things like lamps or fans, plug them in right there and you'll be fine. The other important thing to remember is both of these AC ports are pure sine wave, and that's different than a lot of portable power stations. A lot of them use modified sine wave, so knowing you have a pure sine wave output means you can use this with sensitive electronics without any worry. To the left of that is where all the charging ports are. The way you'll normally charge is at home through the AC. So you'll plug in the AC kit right in here, plug it into a wall outlet and charge it up really quickly. You can also use the solar panel charging kit here uh, between 12 and 28 volts DC and you can connect that up to your solar panels and charge it there. Or you can find a cable to charge it from your car if you choose to do that. To the right of that is a circuit breaker. If you draw too much current out of all of these outlets combined, you may pop that breaker. If that happens, unplug everything, let it sit for a couple of minutes and reset the breaker, and then just be careful about what you plug in again, and you'll have a good metric of how much current you're drawing based on that display. 
One other thing I did want to mention is you can turn all of these on with their own individual power buttons. And that's important because you don't want to have everything on at the same time unless you're using it. So if you're not using the AC circuit, don't turn this on because the inverter that actually provides this power draws energy out of the batteries and you'll just be wasting it. So keep this off unless you're going to plug some AC devices in there and turn this on when you need it to charge the 12 volts or the USB. On the top of the unit, you'll find a nice handle that's used for carrying it around, and it folds down inside the unit, which I like a lot. It's also nice and wide. Some of the handles are really small. This one's plenty wide. It's easy to grab, and it folds down flush with the top of the unit. I think that's nice, because a lot of the handles stick up above the top, and then it's kind of awkward if you throw it in your car. You can't put something on top of it. With this one, it's nice and flush. You'll also see a wireless charger right here. So if you have a device that's Qi compatible, you can drop it on top of the unit, turn on the DC, it'll start wirelessly charging that device up to 15 watts. So a larger phone, anything that works with Qi, you can drop in there and it'll start charging. And that's really convenient because you won't have to worry about carrying cables and connecting things up. Just drop your phone on there, it'll automatically start charging. On the side, you'll notice a ventilation hole cut right here. There's a fan behind that. When this unit is operating and there's a lot of current being drawn out of it, or you're charging it quickly, that fan may turn on to keep the electronics inside at a very comfortable temperature. That's controlled automatically, so there's no worry whatsoever. So that's something that would happen normally, again, if you're using it, drawing a lot of current out of it, or you're fast charging the device. On the bottom of the unit, you'll find four rubber feet in each of the corners that are designed to protect the bottom of it when you set it down on a rough surface. They also keep it right where you put it down because if you set it down on a slippery surface, you don't want this thing sliding off and falling over. They can also help to absorb any shock when you put this thing down on a solid surface and not transfer that to the sensitive electronics inside. I hope that closer look was helpful. Now here are a few things that I really like about the Bluetti EB3A that you can use to compare it to other portable power stations you may be considering. The first thing is this product has an almost ideal portability to power ratio. And what I mean by that is the product weighs about 10 pounds, which is light enough to take with you anywhere, but it has an internal capacity of 268 watt hours, which is a lot of energy to pack into a small case like that. It can also provide 600 watts of external charging and operating capabilities that can surge to 1200 watts. So you've got plenty of power to operate all the things you're operating at home, plus the surge capability to handle things like drills or fans or compressors that you may plug it in the field that draw a little bit of extra current when you first plug them in. This unit can handle that extra surge. Another big difference is that Bluetti has built the charging circuit for the AC inside the unit. Now that's important for a couple of reasons because other portable power stations may use an external brick to convert the AC in your home to DC to charge their products. But the challenge with that brick is number one, they're gonna go bad over time and you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to find a replacement. But more importantly, those bricks are wildly inefficient. So you're wasting energy. Plus the power station has no control over that conversion. So it just can take the energy that's being distributed and then charge the batteries with it. By having the internal charging circuit, Bluetti not only controls the way that conversion is being done, but they're also really careful about how they distribute that across the batteries, and they can be incredibly efficient with it as well, which means you can actually charge this unit to 80% in less than an hour. Some of those other units that use the external brick could take five, six, eight hours to charge it, depending on the capacity, which means you can't get out the door as quick as you can with this one. So I love the fact that I can plug it into a wall outlet and be out the door in less than an hour with a fully charged product. Another key difference is the battery technology in this. A lot of other units use lithium polymer batteries. This one uses lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is the very latest storage technology out there. And the difference between those two is that lithium polymer batteries, that chemistry is really susceptible to hot weather, cold weather. It doesn't hang onto a charge as long. You can't charge it and discharge it as many times. Lithium iron phosphate batteries allow you to hang on to the charge for longer periods of time. They're very tolerant of hot and cold weather. Plus they're gonna give you thousands of recharge cycles, which means you can buy the unit and use it for a decade and still have plenty of use out of those batteries. All right, as far as the charge goes, once it's charged, the Bluetti gives you a lot of different ways to pull those electrons out of the batteries to charge and operate your devices. So for starters, you've got an AC circuit on the front that can provide 600 watts of continuous power that can surge to 1200 watts. It's also a pure sine wave output. A lot of other portable power stations use a modified sine wave, which kind of works, but it's not great for sensitive electronics. So knowing I've got a pure sine wave output means I can use it with anything I own out in the field. 
The other thing is they're giving you surge protection on there, like I mentioned, at 1200 watts. So plugging a drill into this unit, no problem whatsoever. Plug it into somebody else's unit, you're going to pop a breaker. So the AC is really solid in this one. They give you a couple of choices for 12 volts DC. You have a standard outlet here, just like in your car, that you can plug anything into that you would plug into your car. 12 volts at 10 amps. There are two 5521s below it as well, which will provide 12 volts as well. And you can use conversion cables to turn those into two more outlets like this or directly charge a lot of external products. Where it really shines is in the USB section. So you've got a couple of choices for USB, both a full-size USB-A port, and there are two of those that'll deliver five volts at three amps. You also have a USB-C, which is the very latest technology that can charge all the newer devices that you own at up to 100 watts, which means you can plug in your laptop, your drone batteries, the bigger tablets, all the things that are really thirsty that need a lot of energy to charge, you can plug into the USB-C. And then finally, this space on the top has a wireless charger behind it. So if you've got a Qi device, like a lot of the newer phones, you can basically just drop it on the top of this unit. It'll wirelessly charge. So you don't have to worry about bringing cables out there in the field with you and losing a cable or having the wrong cable. Just drop your phone or other device on the top of it and it'll automatically charge. The final thing I want to mention is that Bluetti actually built an application you can use to monitor how the charging's going. So you can set this thing up and be far away from it as long as you're within Bluetooth range and you can actually monitor the charge in and out of the unit and how much energy is left in the unit, as well as control some of the charging functions inside the actual unit. So I think it's great that they're giving you remote control of the unit through an application. So all those things being equal really put this on the leading edge of most of the portable power stations on the market today. And I think it's a wonderful product. And I think it's, it's really perfect for a couple of days of camping. Or again, if you're heading out in your RV, need a way to charge your devices, or you just want to have a little extra energy around the house in case you have a power failure, you can pull this out of the closet and plug everything into it and kind of enjoy that power outage, you know, in a little bit of comfort because you've got the portable power station fully charged and ready to go. So that's pretty much all I had for today. I hope you found value in this clip. I think it's a wonderful product. I've been using it for a while. I like it an awful lot and I think you're going to like it as well. So thanks an awful lot for watching and until next time, stay nerdy. Mm -hmm.